Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to meet you, to know you'll be in Oaxaca, hopefully, for the GOP OSM meeting. I want to welcome you uh, in the name of Oaxaca City, where the conference will be hosted. My name is Pablo Gonzalez. I am uh, originally from Oaxaca. I'm studying a PhD in the University of British Columbia in Canada. And I'll give, I'll give you a quick tour of uh, Oaxaca State and City um, for you to, to have an idea before visiting. Uh, Oaxaca is a state uh, the, in red in the map, a city, that yellow star, and then a continent, we could say, because it has a very, very large diversity of the different peoples, villages, um, and customs, with a population uh, of, 11, uh, of 4 million people scattered in 11,000 communities, in the area that is pretty much the same as Portugal, 100,000 square kilometers, Oaxaca has a very large diversity of ecosystems, peoples, and customs. Um, indigenous, indigenous peoples are a very important part of uh, Oaxaca diversity. You see that map in my, on my back. There are 16 indigenous peoples, all of them with variants uh, among them. And then uh, we have also given the, the broader topography, many ecosystems. Uh, and when you combine these two, you create a perfect mix for a very high diversity in relatively small space. And that's why I was saying we could consider a continent. In my short life, I haven't um, managed to see even 5% of the state, uh, even though I, I travel frequently when I live there. Um, and the most recent regions of Oaxaca are the Valle Centrales in yellow, the Sierra Norte in orange, the Ciudad de Oaxaca in white circle, and uh, the Costa in, in, in green. And I'll be using names in Spanish just because I think it's what you're going to encounter once you're traveling in Oaxaca, so better to get acquainted now. Oaxaca has three international airports, one uh, close to the city and the other two in the coast, just for you to consider that um, now we are celebrating that there is a new road that can take you from Oaxaca City to the coast in pretty much two hours, which is also the time that takes to go to the Sierra Norte. Um, and so you could consider plan arrangements that not only go back and forth between Oaxaca City and your and your uh, residence, but also you could you could try to move from Oaxaca to the coast and hike up, hatch a, hike, a plane uh, back to wherever you're going. I would really recommend you visit the coast not now that we have the, the new highway, but that's going to be something uh, that you, you'll you decide on your own. Um, you can, um, I would say you can visit the entire state, but these are the most popular and most tourist regions, so I would say it makes sense to stick to these regions for your first trip. If it's your first trip, if you already know Oaxaca, then you know what you're doing. Uh, and maybe you're just here for the recommendations <laughs> of a local. Uh, well, um, the Ciudad de Oaxaca is, you'll, you, it, when you're there, you'll it, at all times feel surrounded by mountains, as you can see here, all the rugged terrain. It's one of the few valleys that you can find in the very um, hilly topography of the, of the state. And Ciudad de Oaxaca is uh, it's circled in, in yellow over there. Uh, has a downtown, downtown Ciudad de Oaxaca, which is the colonial um, area. And then you have a lot of different neighborhoods surrounding that downtown. Most of the activities of the GLP OSM are going to happen in the in the in the, city, in the central and in, in the downtown for, for probably. But then there's many things that you can do in the other neighborhoods. Oaxaca has uh, more or less a million people uh, population, so it's big enough for you to get lost, but also have a lot of fun. Um, and I'll give you some recommendations of different things that I would recommend very much to do in Oaxaca. I made up the categories, and I'll show show and share some images and ideas about different instances of it. Um, many of these things are even will be very close to your hotel or, or or maybe they'll take a couple hours to get to but they're not tremendously far i'm not including the coast or the or the sierra norte in this in these recommendations just because i, I think it's it's we have enough to do in the city uh, and this is what most people will be able to do if you want to do more plans and maybe 
you want to write to me or con or consider looking at a touristic guide i'll share some of the, some of the nice touristic guides that are the, that are in spanish but are the, out there and, and might be very helpful um, let's go for the walks. The walks, one of the beautiful walks around, around Oaxaca is the Jalatlaco village. It's a village that got eaten by the city. It's very close to the centro, two or three minutes uh, by, by taxi or 12 minutes, 12 minutes walk. And it's a beautifully decorated uh, old neighborhood full of different um, hipster commerces, uh, pretty much pedestrian area. It's very nice to visit. Um, and the Lord Santo Domingo is a must, and it's probably something you cannot skip in Oaxaca because it, it crosses the, the entire centro and splits it in two. Uh, it goes from the largest church of Oaxaca, Santo Domingo, down to the central plaza of El Zócalo, and it's uh, the, the place to be in Oaxaca. I just walk back and forth. It's going to be an amazing experience because there's lots of shops, lots of people, uh, and you'll probably find uh, all sorts of... Um, GLP superstars uh, walking around it, so I would recommend you visit also. Um, Las Canteras is a nice park that has been remodeled recently, that has interesting architecture. It has a kids library, it has uh, some um, gyms and outdoor spaces for, for doing sports, etc. It's pretty, pretty recommended. And then Escaleras del Fortín is, uh, a, a, I would say, a group of 300 stairs that you climb up to go to um, to the, the kind of the central hill of Oaxaca City. And from there, you have a nice uh, view of the city, of the mountains, and then you can keep going after the stairs and go up a, a mountain that is popular. So you, you're you kind of safe, even, even if it looks like a little um, abandoned and uh, dirt road area it, it, it is it is safe to go around there and you know, have fun especially during peak hours you just don't go at night and you know uh, use use your use your own um risk uh, thermometer um for art you have san martin tilcajete some alebrijes which are sculptures of different uh, animals and monsters that are put together by the by the, by the the artisans, the, the people in Tilcajete are known for doing very nice alebrijes, and you can visit the village and visit the workshops of the of the of the, the artists. You can go see uh, tapetes, rocks in Tatitlan del Valle, which is pretty much the same. You go to the workshops, you talk to the people, and and ideally you well, you try to buy from the people who made them. A lot of people are second or third third parties um, selling the, the products if you buy from the from the producer well it's nicer to skip intermediaries but also the intermediaries are important and um, they do an important job of uh, collecting and showing you uh, the best of many workshops so just um, just a reflection to have in mind um, San Bartolo Coyote Tech sells uh, black clay which is a, an amazing an amazing pottery and it can have um, functions beyond the decor decoration. There's some you can buy uh, cutlery, cutlery or silverware, or whatever, right? There are all sorts of things. And then Casa San Agustin makes paper, but it's also an exhibition um, center, and and it's a refurbished um, textile factory that has become this museum and workshop area. It's kind of Far from Oaxaca, relatively, it's an hour drive, maybe, but it is in a, in the Etla Valley, which is a, a, a valley close to the, close to the city, and it is highly recommended for its quality of um, of art and products that you can get there. Nature, the Jardín and Novo Botanic is very hard to book a tour, but maybe if you do it in advance, you can get away with it. It is a beautiful collection of all the different plants uh, of the state, which is which feels like huge and 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 and, and very valuable. Once you're there, um, you feel how diverse Oaxaca is, and uh, which which is something hard to grapple with uh, when you just see it on the map. Yerbelagua are petrified the waterfall. So just just from the beginning, they, it sounds like a crazy thing. It, this is a very popular touristic destination, but it's also two hours away, so you have to book a tour. 
highly recommend that it's a very impressive landscape. Um, but yeah, just have that in mind. The pueblos of Ancomundados are, the, are in the Sierra Norte. It, it's also two or three hours drive up to the pueblos, but they have cabins and they have very nice walks around, around the pueblos. So highly recommend that if you have a spare day or two, uh, maybe too much to try to go for a day. It's better to spend the night there in some cabins or some lodging. Um, you have to contact the travel agency or, or, or just try to book it your own. Um, El Tule is the, the thickest tree in, probably in the world. It, it's a uh, circumference is like 30 meters or 40 meters. Um, so a DVH of a, 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 ten, a 10 meter DVH is it's crazy. You'll see it, you'll be able to compare it next to uh, to the church that's standing next to it and it looks tiny. Um, so very interesting. Archaeology, I have to say Monte Alban is one of the top top touristic destinations of Mexico, and it is a very important archaeological site for many reasons. Try to go. It is also an hour away from the city. You have to take a taxi. It's totally worth it. Try to aim for the morning. It's a very hot zone, so um, you can you can get toasted there, but, but totally worth going. Uh, Museo de Santo Domingo is a collection of uh, it's a historical display of, of, of different moments of Oaxaca history. So it has uh, all sorts of um, arts and, and decorations and uh, historical products from, from the history of Oaxaca, which is, spans across 3,000, 2,000 years. Uh, so very, very important. Uh, if you want to go to the museum, it can be very interesting to do it beforehand or afterwards because it'll do, it will give you kind of the round up your perspective of what Oaxaca's history and, and developmental stages were. Mitla is another very important archeological site from another, uh, Montalbani Zapotec, Mitla is Mixteco. It's tremendously different. It's right across the valley. Um, uh, so they're kind of hour and a half distance, but, um, but also super interesting and, and recommended. These are the top history things that I would say you have to do, uh, but for history stuff, you, 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 can, you can be in Oaxaca for ages and never finish with them. Um, I split culinary stuff between traditional and um, contemporary because traditional is stuff that, 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 that you will find in different regions and these are just re representing uh, common foods that you eat in Oaxaca. Uh, the the contemporary are more like foodie stuff that uh, that are pretty unique and 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 just a different category. Sandunga brings uh, flavors from the coast to Oaxaca Sea. If you're not going to the coast, you can try the food of the coast in Sandunga. Highly recommended, right there in the centro, as well as Levadura de Olla, who is owned by an anthropologist that has been traveling Oaxaca and collecting all the different recipes that you have never tried before as a Oaxaqueño probably because um, they are unique to certain specific tiny regions of Oaxaca. So it's a very nice display of uh, diversity of that diversity that is very unique and uncommon. Um, totally worth it. I have to recommend it only because it's another culinary important, important project um, because they collect different land raised seeds, land, land raised corn from different communities in Oaxaca, and then they use that to produce different um, different corn products. Uh, the basics, the, the staples of Mexican food, quesadillas, tacos, with very high quality corn, really, really feel different from, from the standard stuff. And, and Itanoni is a project that has a strong component of um, social responsibility, market integration, and conser conservation of genetic material. So totally worth going. Uh, it's not in downtown. You have to drive for, for five minutes or, or walk. Uh, very recommended. Pasillo de Humo is something that you will, be, you will see. Uh, highly recommended in touristic guides. It's in the Mercado de Noviembre. And um, it, it, it's just uh, 
rotisserie of things. It's just uh, a lot of uh, fires going on with people putting meat and vegetables in it. And, and it is just a surprising thing. Umo means fog. So you're in the middle of the fog of the, of the smoke, uh, walking shoulder to shoulder with people and trying to get something to eat. Uh, it's, an, it's an interesting experience. Um, definitely not a place to have a night, uh, like an important conversation, but uh, but a nice place to experience the, the cows of, of getting good food. Um, contemporary places, uh, definitely Los Santos is an important place, right in the Andador. Uh, very good chef, uh, who's not Oaxacana, but tremendously good. Um, has been forever in there, and the the mezcales are, are very very well renowned too. Casa Oaxaca, same very very expensive restaurants uh, relatively to the rest of the stuff, but also bringing fusion between crazy techniques of the cooking and the great ingredients that you can find in Oaxaca because of the diversity and just um, a culinary experience for sure. I'm I'm recommending the origin too because it is um, maybe easier to book. Uh, probably more more towards the foodie scene of like dishes that are very artistic and and you know picture picture worth food but um but also very very good very good very good stuff and bulenk i have to recommend bulenk because I, I i guess at some point you might get tired of the spiciness and everything and bulenk is more like a like a european bakery with very good ingredients from Oaxaca and, and they, they they are tremendously famous, very well reviewed in Google. Uh, if you're trying to find any of the other contemporary places, just just Google them. There's there's so many um there's so many guides, so many uh foodie websites that would that, that, that will take you to different places. These are the ones I know um and that I like. Museums, all sorts of museums around the, the Museo Textil for, for textiles, highly recommended. The architecture is very special. Centro Fotográfico Álvarez Bravo. Uh, it's a, it's a, a photography museum. So uh, something special, I would say. I don't see that many uh, in other places. Um, and then Marcos Contemporary Art, super interesting, right in the Andador. So it just takes a second to go up and uh, be in the museum, which has very particular, interesting exhibits. Uh, Iago, it's more like a, like a library, like a, like a center for reflection. There is, a, I have to honor Maestro Toledo, who is uh, like the precursor and, and very important leader of, of many of these uh, artistic initiatives. He passed a couple of years ago and he was, very important, uh, the most important uh, artist in Mexico for many years. Um, so it's worth knowing that Maestro Toledo uh, was uh, uh, a very important sponsor of, 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 of Oaxaca's uh, historical and, and artistic scene. And if you see products of him, um, just have a look. He's an amazing artist. Mufi, I think some of the stuff for, of GLP are, is going to happen in Mufi. So I, I I I think you'll stumble on it upon it uh, eventually, for any reason. Um, shopping. If you want to buy mezcal, you can take a tour to Matatlan, another village that is close to, um, close to Mitla on that the Tlacolula Valley. Um, very interesting tour. Uh, where they can show you the process of how they make the mezcal. Mezcal. There's many chocolate factories too, where people make chocolate in front of you so that you can have a sense of what the traditional chocolate recipe is. It's not the, the cocoa butter chocolate that is commonly uh, eaten nowadays everywhere. Um, uh, this, is, this is a more uh, rigid uh, chocolate, but people will make it for you and then they'll give you a bag with the hot chocolate and you'll be able to dry it out and then consume it and, or, or make it into some smoothies, which is unbelievable. Um, Mercado Artesanías, it, it's, it's literally known as Mercado Artesanías. The, the original one, there's many other hand artesan, artesanías markets. Handicrafts, look for artesanías in Google. You'll find many places where these are sold. Um, I want to tell you that uh, some of the, the, of the handicrafts are counterfeit, mostly from, from uh, Asian origin. The, try to ask uh, 
or get a queue of, of whether you're buying counterfeit and not to buy counterfeit maybe uh if you can it's also valid if, if like if you're buying it from someone who clearly needs the money just um just buy it it's okay just i, I just want to let you all know that some of the stuff is counterfeit and if you find say a beautiful hummingbird that that costs five hundred dollars five hundred dollars or whatever and then you see it for three um it's probably because the the people who made it and the and the kind of work is different uh even though they might look kind of similar well, um people going with kids might be interested in taking them to centro cultural san pablo which is uh, a beautiful museum but also a restaurant and a, and a small kind of kids entertainment uh, facility where you can take your kids to play board games etc be with other kids there's sometimes a something called a carousel in there and stuff like that. And then there's these two B BS Biblioteca Santiago libraries, which are pretty cool. One in Xochimilco, very close to Centro, the one in Canteras, in the Ciudad de las Canteras, a little bit further. But both are incredible spaces for kids if you're planning to bring your kids. Um, it can be super cool to, to take them there. They can spend hours in there. They'll meet other kids. They'll, they'll just have fun in there. There's There's... Also, many friend, kids friendly things in the in the walks in the pool. Like Oaxaca is a is a friend it's a friendly city for kids. Uh, everybody has kids, and you'll see them everywhere. Um, except when they go to school. School is not very good for kids in Oaxaca. We had a lot of problems with education, but that's another topic that we can discuss later. Um, Dia de los Muertos. A lot of you are expect, uh, expecting uh, being part of the celebration of Dia de los Muertos. It is a very good thing to try to do. Um, Dia de los Muertos is more of a personal ritual for the family, so it's hard to think of you doing your Dia de los Muertos, but you can observe how the ritual happens. They, there might be parades, so Dia de los Muertos, like the one in the park, um, right? It can be very interesting to, to be part of it. That one, you can, you can just engage, interact, go in, dance, whatever you want to do. Um, for the rituals of um, offering uh, offers to the to the death uh, of of each of the families, because the, the main idea is that we go and we respect our death with with offers. Well, it's it's kind of hard to be a tourist and and also engage, but you can observe and 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 enjoy Dia de los Muertos. My impression is that Dia de los Muertos will will find you. You don't really have to do much to find Dia de los Muertos when it's Dia de los Muertos, which is like first and second of November. You you'll just stumble upon it in the street and, and everywhere. It's, it's just the, the city transforms into a, into a celebration. So just uh, relax and, and enjoy. And that's it for today. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And just reach out to, to, to me if you think um, if there's anything else that could be shared or, or if you're interested in more information. I already shared this presentation a guide and I will share some other resources, maybe in Spanish, but that are like deeper into some of the recommendations um, in the GOP web